2017 of the 2017 2018 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the evening? Thank you, Mayor. Good leadership is never about advancing yourself, it's always about advancing your team. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we'll uh, move on to the roll call. Alderperson Wolf will be attending the Common Council meeting remotely. He's on uh, a process of flying in uh, just a few minutes ago, and he will join us during the meeting. Would the clerk call the roll for the remainders? So there are 15 present. Okay. Um, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Drawn. Thank you, Mr. Mason. Our, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, looking for a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Under resignations, I'll turn it over to the city attorney. First uh, resignation is uh, resignation by Mark Hines, uh, who is uh, resigning from the Sheboygan Board of Water Commissioners. We also have a resignation from Stephanie O'Connell. Uh, Stephanie O'Connell is resigning from the Sheboygan Sustainable Task Force. We also have a resignation from uh, uh, Susan Richards as city clerk. Did you want to do the appointment as well? Well, let's take the resignations first. Um, can we vote on all three? No. Okay, going back to item uh, uh, 4.1, Mark Heinz, uh, need a motion. All the person drawn? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Item 5.1 is uh, Stephanie O'Connell. All the person drawn? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Mm -hmm. Item 6, 1.6, Susan Richards. All the person drawn? <sighs> motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. <laughs> Passes. Next, we'll move on to mayor's appointment. City attorney. Uh, we do have an appointment, uh, Meredith De Bruin, to be appointed to the office of city clerk effective January 6, 2018. Uh, Alder person drawn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look for a motion to suspend and a motion to confirm the appointment. I believe that we're looking for a motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? Uh, we, this is just so that we have a smooth uh, turnover in that office. And then we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second, second. to confirm? Thank you. So that, uh, those appoint that appointment is before us. Is all those in favor? Please sing. Well, okay, we're calling the roll. Can we trust Meredith to do that? Stop. <laughs> Did you really say that? That's <laughs> Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Welcome. Welcome. Um, next item on the agenda is a presentation of the 2017 strategic plan and action items and critical measures by Administrator Daryl Hoffman. Uh, 
in addition to my presentation tonight, uh, put together a few slides to help you follow along. Uh, I think all of you and those uh, in the audience as well as those that are viewing this, um, again, you all have a hard copy. Uh, this is the third update that I've pr provided to you. If you recall, uh, you as a group got together, I think in August of 2016, along with the management team, uh, ultimately following an information hearing uh, this document was approved January of 2017. If you recall, there are six focus areas. Each of those focus areas uh, are broken down into goals, specific objectives, and what we're gonna talk about tonight is the action items, 2017-2018 action items, the status of those action items, and then specifically the related critical measures. Uh, given the information that's been provided to you, uh, it was brought forward by the different management team members. And again, I'll hit the highlights uh, to make it easy for you to go through this yourself. Uh, we've highlighted in blue those where uh, we've completed the assignment, whether it be the action items or we've met or exceeded on the critical measures. Uh, again, Meredith, I, I realize I'm going to go through this fast, so um, uh, it may be a challenge at times to, to keep up. On the first page, again, uh, focus uh, in some cases on the blue items, uh, numbers. And again, the first column, I've identified a number. Uh, last time, as a result of my presentation, there was some uh, challenge as far as following me, so I've added uh, a column number. Uh, seven and eight talks about library-related uh, action items, and you can see that uh, uh, Garrett has achieved those uh, er early part of this year. Uh, expanding library resources, sharing consortium to a four-county system, also redesigning the second floor of Mead Library to provide more collaborative public spaces. Under critical measures, uh, fire department is number 10, percent of first EMS unit arrival time. Uh, Chief Romus is at 88%, where the benchmark currently is 90%. You can see on the far right column under the notes that there has been significant strides made in this area to reduce the uh, time associated with uh, that first EMS unit arriving. Uh, 13 and 14, uh, other large public safety department, the police department, part one crimes, uh, violent crimes, part one crimes, property crimes. Uh, you'll see that uh, it's 1.8, 12.5 respectively per 1,000 population. Uh, both are substantially lower as far as the crime levels than what the benchmarks were identified. In fact, 33% lower than the benchmark for violent crimes and 44% lower as far as crimes associated with property. Uh, so both uh, benchmarks uh, are exceeded as far as reducing crime. Number of neighborhood associations, 15, 16. Uh, ne number of neighborhood associations uh, of the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet as well as numbers of uh, number of neighborhood meetings. Uh, again, in both cases, they've exceeded the benchmarks. On the second page, uh, walkability score, uh, we are, uh, our benchmark is to be 80 of 100 points. Uh, in the downtown area, uh, using this national website, we are at 80 points. On page three, uh, the next uh, focus area is infrastructure and public facilities for action items, uh, 28, 29, uh, 28 is to develop a five-year information technology plan and adequate funding. Uh, that plan has been developed. Uh, repainting rails at riverfront on the south side of the river. Again, that was uh, completed uh, this, this year. Uh, install new river docks on, at South Pier. That was completed uh, in the spring of this year. Uh, down at the bottom of the page, uh, 39, linear feet of infrastructure improved. The benchmark was 33,000 linear feet. Uh, this year we will complete, uh, at, at least through October, we have a, uh, one more month to go. We are near that goal. We're at 98% of that 33,000 uh, feet goal. Next page, uh, third uh, focus area is economic development. Uh, number 44 is execute a new tourism council and tourism zone. That was completed uh, in January of this year. Um, for critical measures, square feet of industrial property, number 55, 40,000 square feet of a new industrial, uh, uh, square feet uh, of industrial property, 
uh, was the goal. We're at 37,400, so 94% of our goal. Number of new businesses, num line number 59, uh, 10 businesses were our benchmark. Uh, year to date, we're at 15, so we're at 150% uh, of our original goal. Next page, continuing on with economic development. Uh, valuation of property within TIF districts. Uh, please report that uh, we are at 106% of our goal. Our goal was approximately $120 million uh, with the information we received earlier uh, this, uh, I guess, late summer, early fall. We're at 126,000 uh, of valuation within our TIDs. Uh, last on this page, 64, annual ridership of the city's trolley, transit trolley, uh, 23,000 was the uh, benchmark. Uh, this past summer was uh, 3,327 or 145% of the benchmark. Comparing this year to last year, uh, we saw an increase of 47% in ridership. Next page, uh, neighborhood revitalization. Uh, line 67 continue to grow the number of new neighborhood associations. Uh, we, uh, this is an ongoing uh, goal of the cities. Uh, two new associations have been uh, approved in 2017, so we uh, have met our goal. 71, uh, implement new Northside neighborhood beat officer. Uh, that officer was hired in January of this year, so we've uh, met, that, uh, met that goal. Critical measures for this neighborhood revitalization focus area, uh, 75, 76, and 77 uh, are again uh, activities associated with, uh, in many cases, these new neighborhood beat officers. 75 is number of code enforcement orders issued. 1,000 was the goal or the benchmark. Uh, we've exceeded that. We're at 124%, or the raw number is 1,235. Number of abandoned vehicles towed, 83 was the benchmark. Uh, we're year to date at 101, so we've exceeded the benchmark. Number of garbage complaints investigated and or cited, 300 was the target. Uh, we're at 740 uh, year to date. On the next page is uh, the fifth focus area, governing and fiscal management. Uh, 84, 85 are submitting our budget and our financial audit documents to GFOA for award consideration. Uh, and again, just to get to that point of submitting, I think is, uh, is, is honorable for the city. Uh, continuing uh, an employee newsletter. Uh, again, this is done on a quarterly basis. Uh, we've met that, that goal. Uh, on the next page, uh, page eight of nine, line 90 is percent of unspent general fund budget. Again, this is year to date. Uh, we're at 7%. Our benchmark is 3.7%. This compares to 6% last year, so we've exceeded as far as percent of un fund, unspent general fund budget. Last, uh, 93 is Moody's Investors Service bond rating for the city. Uh, again, with our issuance in April this year, uh, we received uh, an affirmation from Moody's of our AA2 rating. The sixth and final uh, focus area on page nine of nine is communication. For action items uh, 94 is to identify a need for a dedicated half FTE, a full uh, public information officer position uh, as part of your budget tonight. Uh, that, that position uh, will be incorporated into an existing position. Um, so uh, we hope to Im implement uh, sometime in 2018, but funding associated with that uh, as far as taking existing position and elevating it slightly for the uh, higher level type duties uh, are included in the 2018 budget. 95, create a monthly uh, electronic communi uh, community newsletter. Again, that has been published uh, monthly uh, by uh, the mayor staff, so we've met uh, that goal. Continued citizen survey on an annual basis. Uh, that survey was completed in July of this year. Um, number 98, create a citizen engagement plan. Uh, this was presented and approved by the Common Council of May of this past year. Under critical measures, a lot of these are, uh, again, uh, social media related. Uh, 100, uh, line 100, number of followers on the city's Twitter account. Uh, we are at 110% of our goal. We're almost 7,500. Number of users on Nextdoor, the goal is roughly 2,400. We're at 3,200. 
Uh, line 102, number of likes on the city's Facebook, 9,700 approximately was the goal. We're at, we exceed uh, 10,000. And last but not least, again, another social media is Nextel uh, Contacts. Uh, 14, almost 1,500 was our goal. Uh, we're uh, just slightly above 1,600. So again, I went through those fairly quickly. Uh, any questions that you have? Uh, yes. The person was pull shoe. I'm just wondering, um, there are three different awards that you applied for. What is the purpose of getting the GFOA award consideration? I mean, is it a fiduciary um, benefit to the city or because it seems like it's causing a great deal of problem with all the different departments. A great deal of problems? I'm overworked and taken, there's the number of man hours that they have to put into doing these reports is substantial. So I'm wondering what, what is the benefit of this award, if I could have some understanding of why we're doing these? Uh, prior to my arrival, uh, the budget consisted of, I think, 20, 25 to 30 pages. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one uh, long Excel spreadsheet. Um, as the city uh, is continuously in front of Moody's Credits uh, Investor Service for a bond rating consideration, uh, a more comprehensive budget, uh, which is more than just numbers, it identifies our, our fiscal plan. Uh, it has benchmarks and uh, tracking of those benchmarks. Uh, Moody's Credit Service um, uh, has made favorable comments about our document I think in light that the document now is over 400 pages, again, we tried to anticipate questions that you have, tried to anticipate questions that the taxpayers have, uh, and ultimately it is a communication uh, document. It increases transparency, which I think uh, our property taxpayers deserve. Uh, you're absolutely right, the first year, 2017 budget was a lot of work. Uh, so at this point, 2008 and beyond, the document is, is basically maintaining it. <coughs> okay, Alderperson Schneider. Thank you. Uh, line item number 59 talks about number of new businesses. At 15, with a target of 10, does that include any cannibalization or closures of existing? Probably have Chad answer that since that's your, your benchmark. And uh, all our purses, Sorensen. Uh, question for number 36. Um, <clears throat> it says we're only at 16%, 82 out of 500. It says fall of 2017. So have those 400 trees not been accounted for yet in that benchmark? Uh, my understanding there's uh, quite a few trees being planted uh, during this time of the year. OK. So, we're, uh, so this is, again, through the third quarter with uh, a higher number expected uh, before we're, we end this year. All right. Thanks, Daryl. Thank you very much for that report. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is public forum. I'll turn it over to City Clerk Sue Richards. And we'll turn it over to the upcoming City Clerk. <laughs> we have three people this evening. The first person would be John Pleasitz. Hi, John. You have, uh, could you state your home address for me, please? Uh, 1502 Millcrest Drive. Thank you, and you'll have five minutes. Mayor Vandersteen, council members, city officials, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here tonight. In order to speed this meeting along, I will be making the final statement. I was under the impression that I was going to be the second speaker, so there will be one more speaker after me. Um, let me start by saying thank you to the council members who took the time to visit the proposed site that runs from 18th Street to Camelot Boulevard. I would also like to thank those aldermen who could not visit the site but spoke extensively with Alderman Bourne regarding this project. 
I am speaking on behalf of 36 of my fellow property owners who live along the 18th Street to Camelot Boulevard corridor. We have all signed a petition opposing this section of trail. We would expect our official city, county, and state to be good stewards of our tax dollars they have at their disposal. Spending these monies wisely is essential in running an efficient government. There are numerous alternatives uh, that this grant money should, could be spent on. You have seen the site along with all of its issues. This currently proposed trail does not get children to school, nor does it get people to work. It is built in a floodplain slash wetland. It does not meet the purpose of the grant. It has grades that bikers do not like. It is unlit and poses a safety hazard. It is constructed in a very dangerous area. It will disrupt wildlife like nesting blue heron, deer, fox, turkey, etc. It is extremely costly and will come with a high maintenance cost. For years, Wisconsin Power and Light had signs up saying, danger, no trespassing, and gave a number to call if anyone was seen in this corridor. Has this suddenly become less dangerous that now we would encourage people into this area? What has changed? Nothing. In closing, we ask that the council vote to file on document 7.4 and deny the county easement. Thank you. Thank you. The next person is Joe Volpo. This is for you, one for the mayor and one for Daryl. Hi, Joe. Can you state your address for me, please? Yes, um, my address is 1518 Nolcrest Drive. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. Okay. I'd like to thank the mayor and the council for giving me this opportunity to speak tonight. Um, <clears throat> tonight I want to speak to you about safety and mostly the safety of our children. Um, these brochures that Jim is passing out to you, I'd like you to take a look at the photos and kind of follow along with me. Um, uh, the information I'm going to give you tonight was acquired from uh, floodplain maps, city and county planning documents, and personal photos that I took myself over the years, and um, these are my resources for my information. Uh, could you please turn to the map number one? Does everybody have one? Okay. Um, Map number one is the source. Uh, the source is the city runoff water, which is all marked in blue lines. Uh, Nolcrest Drive is highlighted in yellow. Fisherman's Creek is the single drainage point for almost the entire south side of Sheboygan. On this flood, and map number two, right below on this floodplain map, note the 40 foot wide bridge opening. The reduct the reduction, force, the reduction of that bridge forces water through the bridge, exploding water into the stream channel. Flip over to photo number three and four. That's the 1998 flooding of the new 18th Street Bridge, failing miserably. Building this bridge created a damning effect. Every drop of runoff water is now forced through the single 40-foot wide opening. Rain as little as one inch turns Fisherman's Creek into a roaring river. Um, if you look uh, on the bottom here, this uh, photo four, that's basically what the, uh, the corridor looks like. It's got these embankments on here. Um, okay, uh, photos five and six. They are, those two photos are both views looking south the water is now passing Nolcrest Drive from 18th Street, passing Nolcrest Drive. Both the 11-inch flood 
which is on the top view, and a three inch rainfall fill the wetlands. Um, that wetland is approximately one and a half football fields wide and a half a mile long the length of the corridor. Photos seven and eight, they show the actual proposed pathway in yellow on the top photo. The wetland and creek heights are marked on the lower right with the two blue arrows, uh, photo eight. Compare the channel width to the automobiles above. The channel is wide and deep and moving fast. Photo eight is a cross-cut section of the Nocrest Drive hillside. It is how the path would look slicing the hill north to south. A bicyclist or walker would be 15 feet from the wetland and 30 foot from the five foot stream channel. No living being should be near this turnpike of water. On July 30th, 2017, Wisconsin broke the state highest annual precipitation record, 25.25 inches, seven inches above average. These records date back to 1894. There is no question weather patterns are changing. Children have been warned this quarter is not a playground. Log bridges spanning the stream channels have been removed by the neighbors. Clubhouses disassembled between the stream loops. In the past 41 years, there has not been an incident of a child getting hurt here. I attribute that to the neighbors <coughs> bordering this quarter. All of them good stewards and watchful eyes. It is just wrong to place men, women, and especially children here. The pathway invites children to explore and innocently play in the wetlands. On document number 7.4, please vote aye to file and not grant the temporary easement. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, we have Jessica Huss. Could you please state your address for me? 1904 North 23rd Street. Thank you, and you'll have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight, Mr. or Mayor Vandersteen and the rest of the City Council. My name is Jessica Huss. I had the opportunity to attend the Public Works Committee two weeks ago and was able to hear the thoughts and opinions of the residents that near live, live near the proposed trail. I'm here tonight to show my support for the trail. I'm a runner and I use the trails all the time. I appreciate that the trails keep me safe and offer me a variety of different terrain to train on. The trails are, make our community unique. This year we are one in seven communities in the U.S. that were awarded a runner-friendly designation, which is due largely to having the trails in our area. From what I understand, Sheboygan County is the only county in the state that is considered bicycle-friendly and is currently a bronze community. I believe that we are honored to have received this grant and we should be taking full advantage of this opportunity. In just 10 plus years, I can see a big difference in the amount of bicycle and pedestrian traffic in the area. While it's true that it may take some time for the program to fully meet its goals, um, since they've been tasked with reprogramming people's mindsets, my children are being raised with a different perspective and I'm sure their children will be as well. There's a wonderful sense of community on the trails. Rarely do I cross paths with anyone I don't get a nice smile or a warm greeting from. One gentleman at the last meeting voiced his concern about the possibility of vandalism due to his, his home being vandalized four times in the last four years. My thought is that I just don't see it. That's just not the kind of people that use the trails. We're out there to train, decompress, and just really enjoy our lives. I feel that um, there seems to be an issue that already exists in that neighborhood, and it's really not fair to link that issue with a trail that doesn't exist yet. If vandals want to get onto your property, they're going to find a way if they don't need a trail. There seem to be some differing opinions on what the trail is gonna do for property values and I feel that they're likely to increase because I'm a person that will potentially pay a little more for the convenience of having a trail in my backyard. I like to run early in the morning and I have to wake up 15 minutes earlier to go to and from the trail um, to have time to drive there and back. It would be great to take 10 steps out my door to go. There's a lot of discussion about the high cost of the trail, this segment in particular. I believe the price is around $1.3 million and I agree that that is a lot of money. But as was pointed out by Alderman Boren at the last meeting and by the gentleman earlier this evening, um, this money is taking a dangerous area and it's making it safe and available for everyone in the community to use. 
I also agree, I understand that some additions have been added to the trail to make the homeowners more comfortable, which I'm happy to pay for as a taxpayer, but I find it a little ironic now that those same people are saying it might be a little, that it's too expensive. I just, I think it's important to look at the full project and not just the one segment. I bet that every project similar uh, similar to this has one segment that costs more than another and it's really not, it's a little misleading to break it apart and just focus on one piece. In all honesty, the number that bothered me the most is the $212,000 that's already been spent on the project and will be wasted if the construction doesn't move forward. It bothers me that the alderman that in the room that night didn't seem too concerned about the money, but more that it just didn't come out of the city's pocket. And to be clear, I don't care if the city, county, or state, or federal government pay for that bill. As a resident and taxpayer, I'm not okay with it. There's 49,000 people that live in the city of Sheboygan, and I'm a little surprised that this issue has escalated this level because 35 people are upset about it, which sounds like 36 now, sorry. Um, from what I've heard, no one's property is being damaged or disturbed, and most of that land is being donated by a large employer in the community. I was left with the feeling that most of the problems presented were really just more gripes, and the residents are just looking for any reason to get you to support them on this. In all honesty, I'm having trouble seeing the difference of having a trail behind their home and a sidewalk that runs in front. In most situations, the sidewalk is even closer than tra this trail is going to be. No one in that meeting was able to convince me that this project will make our community less attractive, less livable, or be detrimental in any way. So I'm here tonight to ask you to remember that you're here to act on behalf of all of your constituents, not just the ones that are speaking out and being the loudest. I would much rather see $1.3 million be spent on a trail that's going to add to and serve our community for generations to come than to throw away $212,000 as if it's nothing. If what I heard from what I heard that evening is that this was presented to you years ago and has been multiple times since then, and you had the opportunity to vote on the different plans and stages, and it was voted and passed through resolution unanimously. Now the staff has taken the concept that you supported and has brought it to implementation. So as I see it, you owe the taxpayers of Sheboygan the trail that we've already begun paying for. Thank you for your time. I do appreciate it. Thank you. That's it. Okay, next we'll go on to mayor's announcements. I'd like to ask uh, Administrator Hofflin to join me at the podium. Uh, Sheboygan was recently recognized for performance and management leadership. Uh, the International City County Management Association, the ICMA, is pleased to announce that Sheboygan, Wisconsin has been recognized for its data-driven management and reporting efforts with a certificate of achievement in performance management. Certificates are based on established criteria and are awarded on three levels, achievement, distinction, and the highest level of recognition, excellence. Recipients at all levels collect and verify data to ensure reliability, train staff in performance measurement, report data to the public through budgets, newsletters, and other information provided to elected officials. The ICMA advances professional and local government management worldwide through leadership, management, innovation, and ethics. Performance management is a bedrock principle of professional and local government management, said ICMA Executive Director Mark Ott. By recognizing these leaders, the ICMA hopes to encourage others to make a commitment to collect and analyze data, report it transparently, and use it continuously to engage communities and improve their organizations. Sheboygan is among 19 jurisdictions receiving their certificate of achievement and one of 57 that were recognized overall. The plaque reads, the ICMA uh, presents the certificate of achievement to, and is presented to Sheboygan, Wisconsin, a recognition of its use to performance data and local management uh, of government, including training, verification, and public reporting. It was presented at the 103rd ICMA Annual Conference in San Antonio, Texas on October 23rd. Now, and this is presented to Daryl and all the administrative staff that work to make this possible. You want to say anything? Thanks, Mike. Uh, the performance measurement really was kicked off uh, several years ago, and I think by resolution, uh, the police chief and the fire chief have been, giving, have been providing their uh, public safety committee uh, with quarterly reports. Uh, so we've attempted to bring other uh, departments sort of into the tent, 
Uh, and I think you've seen as committee members sort of an increase in, in reporting uh, and hopefully discussion. Again, it's a talking point for you to be able to uh, better analyze and, and uh, be, in, in essence, foster additional discussion at, at your committees. Uh, as uh, Mayor Mike identified, we are one of 57 nationwide to receive this award. I'm, I'm very proud, again, of the staff's work in this area. Uh, as we discussed earlier, performance measurements is, is here to stay as far as uh, the city being able to verify that we are making progress uh, in the different uh, goals that have been established for us. Thanks again. Also on your desk, you found uh, my uh, budget support letter. Uh, so that's on there for your consideration tonight as we make the final decision on the budget. And I also want to let you know that uh, because of the re resignation of Mark Heinz from the Board of Water Commissioners, we will be scheduling an election for a new member to elected to the Board of Water Commissioners. And that will take place on November 20th, our next council meeting. Anyone interested in that uh, office should um, uh, send a letter of intent and a resume to City Clerk Sue Richards. Tonight you'll be voting on a resolution to approve a temporary easement for the multi-purpose trail proposed in the Alliant Energy Corridor. I would like to remind you that on July 15th of 2013, Resolution 37 of 1314 was passed by the Public Works Committee and the City Council. It reads, a resolution supporting the construction of a non-motorized pedestrian trail in the Wisconsin Power and Light Utility Corridor from Lakeshore Drive to Taylor Drive, two and a half miles on the south side of Sheboygan. Whereas the city of Sheboygan is interested in providing designating areas for pedestrians and bicyclists because promoting walking and bicycling is active transportation and choice provides direct health, economic, and increased air quality benefits to our community. And whereas the city of Sheboygan recognizes and acknowledges the long-term ownership and management responsibilities associated with this project, Sheboygan County and the non-motorized transportation pilot program will meet its obligations under the funding and maintenance contract for the project. And whereas the City of Sheboygan's support for this important potential project, now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan supports city staff to work with county staff uh, associated with the non-motorized program, as well as other volunteers and businesses to move this project forward. Last December, this, uh, we passed a resolution to approve the strategic plan for the city. And Part of the key strategy that was enumerated under the quality of life goal was to pursue multimodal transportation options to ensure that the community is convenient, accessible, and connected by local transportation options, specifically to continue the expansion of the non-motorized pedestrian routes and bike lanes and to improve walkability and bikeability of Sheboygan. It was further spelled out in 2017 action items that Sheboygan should work to become recognized a bike friendly community and that the city should coordinate with Sheboygan County on the Southside Utility Corridor bike path. Today I also received an email from Jim Schusler of the SCEDC and he said, just please know that there is an incredible enthusiasm, especially with skilled workforce, considering re relocating to our area for this type of bike trail in Sheboygan. If we're going to win this future, we have to provide the amenities that the future wants. Jim wanted to tell you this himself tonight, but when he called there was no spots available on the public forum. We've had to make many tough decisions recently with local opposition. Please follow through with the promises that this council has made in the past and recently reaffirmed. I urge you to defeat the recommendation of the Public Works Committee to file this resolution and then put a positive motion on the floor for passage. I thank you very much. Okay, next we'll go on to uh, hearing. The hearing is item 2.1, number 8 of 1718. Pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices and sent by the city clerk, <coughs> there is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city of Sheboygan official zoning map to change the use district classification for the property located at 3530 Lower Falls Road from class PPUD to pre-planned unit development to class uh, 
JMKAC PUD planned unit development. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderperson Drawn? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion passes. Next in the consent agenda, I include items uh, 3.2 through 3.12. Alderperson Drawn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. I would like to pull 3.10 for a separate vote. Okay, that's before us for consideration. Please proceed. Okay, uh, actually not for a separate vote. I would like to have this uh, referred back to the Public Works Committee. I received two phone calls today from uh, the parties that were responsible for this, and uh, they mentioned that uh, there was some communication errors and things that they weren't aware of when uh, the Public Works meeting was, so they weren't able to, uh, well, they obviously they missed the meeting, and they weren't able to address the Public Works Committee, so they would like it referred back to the Public Works Committee so they could address them uh, a week from tomorrow when we meet next. Is there a second? Second. Um, we said second, I'm sorry. <laughs> Alderperson Bellinger, are you familiar that uh, I got a call as well too and they said that Armory Park is not on the board at all for consideration, that they're coming up with a new plan. So this document that we received refers to Armory Park and nothing else. Uh, I was just asked to have this referred back so that they could address the Public Works Committee. Okay, any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? For re-referral. Thirteen ayes, two noes. Motion passes. The other items on the consent agenda are now before us. Is there any other discussion on anything else? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to communications, item 4.1 will refer to the Public Works Committee. Under reports of officers, items 5.1 through 5.14 will be referred to various committees. <coughs> Under resolutions, item 6.1 is resolution number 86 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget to establish an estimated revenue and appropriation for the 2017 Community Block Grant Entitlement Program. Uh, there's uh, Alderperson Drawing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Take a motion to suspend. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Why are we suspending? Chad, could you please enumerate that? The reason we're suspending is so that we can get these funds out the door because typically we would get this funding back in June and with the president's budget and Congress first passing this in late August, 
uh, we've just received the contract now, and we have to spend um, about 75% of the funds by the end of January. So if we were to lie this over, we wouldn't have enough time to get the money uh, that's going through pass through to a number of public service agencies out in time. Thank you. If there's no other objections, I'll, uh, please proceed. All the persons drawn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll have a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is resolution number 87 of 1718 by Alderperson Bellinger to urge the President of the United States and the United States Congress to continue the Federal Historic tra tra Tax Credit Program and to otherwise provide with respect thereto. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. Uh, I'd make a motion to suspend for the following reason. Uh, the, the Congress is going to be taking up this issue in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, specifically, I think it's going to be in November sometime, and we need to get this letter out to our, um, our congressmen and our U.S. senators so they have it and uh, they can deliberate that and make the right choice for us. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any other discussion on the motion? I think you made one, didn't you? No, I need, now I would make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. All right, and that's a second. <laughs> now any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 through 6.6 .6 will be referred to various committees under reports of committees. Item 7.1 is RC number 159 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred RO number 199 of 1718 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Tom Wagner, the Sheboygan County Board Chairman, requesting the Public Works Committee and the entire Common Council support our City and County staff request for a temporary limited easement so that the trail can traverse through the City Park known as Camelot Dog Run Park and Rec. Uh, Alderperson Schneider. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 7.2 is RC number 162 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 85 of 1718 by Alderperson Sorensen, Boren, Nelson, Savaglio, urging the UWS System Board of Regents and the President of the University System to have the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan merged and partnered with the University of Milwaukee rather than the University of Wisconsin Green Bay and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to uh, accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That item is on for discussion. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to reiterate a few points um, that we discussed in the Finance and Personnel Committee about why I feel that this uh, resolution is important. Um, as a lot of folks know, the UW system is restructuring how their campuses <coughs> are organized. All the two-year campuses will be partnered with a four-year university. Um, right now, the Board of Regents is scheduled to um, uh, deliberate this and discuss it and vote on it at their meeting this week, uh, Thursday and Friday. Um, right now, the proposed merger for UW Sheboygan will be with UW Green Bay. Um, and outlined in the resolution, I make a few points, but I'd like to reiterate a few more points. Um, 
and for, for me and a lot of the other council members that I discussed this with, it's all about the opportunity and strategically positioning UW Sheboygan, the city, um, as well as the students, um, and make sure that they have options and access to all opportunities um, in the future. Um, so I'd just like to kind of reiterate a lot of why uh, I feel so strongly about this issue. Um, UW-Milwaukee is uh, logistically closer to UW-Sheboygan as well. And I'm not making any reference to, you know, the cities, you know, Green Bay, Milwaukee. I'm specifically talking about the schools and the institutions themselves. Um, so UW-Milwaukee has just recently been classified as an R1 Carnegie uh, Research Institution. So UW-Milwaukee is in the classification as, as, as a top-tier research institution, which I feel like would give us a lot more uh, benefits and opportunities for the city in possible partnerships with uh, UW-Milwaukee School of Public Health, School of Freshwater Sciences, which is the only uh, School of Freshwater Sciences in the United States. And moving down the line with a partnership with NOAA and the Marine Sanctuary, I think that would be uh, a great opportunity for the city and the school to partner with. Um, also, if you talk about our, menu, our, our workforce base in Sheboygan County alone, we have a very strong manufacturing base. And if, um, excuse me, if we need workers to take those jobs, but if they want to move up the ladder and get uh, good, good skills and good trainings, they need to fur some further education depending on those positions that they have as well. So UW-Milwaukee has a College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Uh, UW-Green Bay does not have a full-fledged School of Engineering. Um, so if we want to have well-rounded workers that have opportunities uh, with the workforce in Sheboygan County, I think that would be a, a phenomenal partnership as well. Um, and if you look at the economic growth and development for the state of Wisconsin, we need to acknowledge that a lot of the workforce development and expansion has, has taken place in southeastern Wisconsin. Uh, one great example is the Foxconn deal that's coming down the line. Um, and while northeastern Wisconsin has had steady population decline over the past few years, Sheboygan really needs to strategically position itself um, to really get the best of both worlds. You know, we can further expand on the opportunities that we have with Green Bay. That would be phenomenal. Um, as well as grow the partnerships with an R1 research institution like UW-Milwaukee so that all the students can have great access to education um, and have many more opportunities that will benefit the community. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Under further discussion, Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you. I would just note that the um, Finance Committee uh, also reviewed uh, this resolution and approved it unanimously. Thank you. Alderperson Trester. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, my kids went, some of my kids went to UW Sheboygan, and when they needed to take an extra class in something, they never even gave Green Bay a second thought. It was always uh, UW Milwaukee where they went. So um, I think that's a good move. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? <coughs> Alderperson Bellinger? Thank you. Um, <coughs> I, I'm a little uh, perplexed by this. You know, partnering with one school or the other school is not going to preclude <coughs> the student that's going to UW Sheboygan for either choosing to go to take classes at Milwaukee or Green Bay. Uh, and I've only known of, of one employer who's voiced their opinion on this, and they voiced it uh, very eloquently and strongly, and that was HSHS uh, in a letter, and they stated that uh, they would prefer to keep. Uh, the Board of Regents recommendation at UW Green Bay, and um, they've got some, you know, very strong uh, employment uh, positions, you know, that that uh, are strategic that they want to keep in place. And so, for that, I'm going to support what was already agreed to by the Regents. Thank you for those comments. Uh, actually, the Board of Regents uh, will be voting on this, I believe, on November 9th. So this will have a chance to get to them prior to that vote. Seeing no other lights, uh, will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 7.3 is RC number 157 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred communication number 2 of 1718 presented to the Common Council by Alderpersons Bourne and Sorensen submitting a communication from 35 constituents 
from District Number 8 opposing the Sheboygan County proposed non-motorized trail in the Wisconsin Power and Light Corridor between South 12th Street and South 18th Street and recommends filing the documents. Alderperson Schneider. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Item 7.4 is RC number 160 of 1718 by, Alder per, by the Public Works Committee, to whom is referred resolution number 75 of 1718 by Alder Person Wolf, authorizing the appropriate city officials to approve the dedicating of a temporary limit easement from the city of Sheboygan for the purposes of constructing a utility corridor multi-use path and recommends uh, that to accept and file. Alder Person Schneider. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file to not approve the temporary easement. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Well, before we have a, a vote on this, um, I'd like to remind the council that when this originally came to us before it was re-referred back to Public Works, Alder Person Born asked for eight questions to be answered. And he said that the, the, the council here and the, and the Public Works Committee needed to know the answers to those questions. And so at this time, I'd like to call up Aaron Brault to answer those questions that were requested by Alderperson Born. Aaron, please come forward. Thank you. As the mayor mentioned, a number of questions were brought forward at the I believe it was September 26th, Department of Public Works meeting. Um, the responses are, are long in some instances, so I'll do my best to summarize. Uh, I'll read the question and then uh, provide a summary of the response <coughs> that we received from uh, various parties. Uh, question number one was uh, a written report from ATC, American Transmission Company, on how the future maintenance of vegetation and power lines will be conducted including how and where the path will be accessed for maintenance. Um, again, there was a number of responses via email between uh, ATC representatives and Alderman Bourne and myself. Uh, in summary, uh, they said any concerns have been adequately addressed. We will have adequate options to access the easement to accomplish any necessary work. We maintain over 9,000 miles of corridor and we don't see the situation as concerning. The second question was a written explanation of the soil boring reports that uh, the engineers have been working on for the entire corridor. Um, it, they're pretty technical in nature, um, but the last sentence of their response was, our structural engineering staff from the consultant noted that nothing in the soil reports was out of the ordinary. Question number three was a written explanation of how the 300 uh, foot bridge will be constructed, including what types of footing and the final cost of the bridge. Again, this was a rather long uh, response, uh, but the contractor will ultimately determine how the, the bridge will be constructed. Um, that's typical. Uh, the estimated cost at this time is 630,000, about 500 for the structure itself and 130 for the uh, abutments. Uh, a type of footing is called a spread footing is gonna be used on the abutments. Uh, the bridge has a minimum of a 75-year lifespan, which is the same as the retaining wall that's being uh, built uh, on the east side of the bridge. The retaining wall was necessary as we made changes to the design uh, to appease some of the concerns uh, regarding privacy and trespassing. Um, question number four was a written report on the overall cost of the project, including design by segment, business drive to South 18th, and South 18th to Camelot. Uh, the construction cost estimate at this time is between 1.7 and 1.8. Uh, the eastern segment is 1.38, and the western segment, uh, if we want to break it into segments, is 370,000. Uh, the design cost, uh, it's a little hard to break out because the contract wasn't uh, um, split into segments, uh, but the overall cost uh, design was 375 and the engineer's uh, best estimate was 212 for the eastern segment and 162 for the western. 
the western segment's cheaper in part because the town of Wilson has allowed us to traverse their old dump road uh, versus building a bridge. Um, the eastern segment is more expensive due to the bridge and the aforementioned retaining wall, obviously. Um, and to get to, to this point in our design, our consultant completed an alternatives analysis, uh, which city and county staff were involved in, um, along with uh, Alliant and ATC. And uh, through that alternatives analysis, we chose the most cost-effective and least environmentally destructive route. Uh, there's some mention before of wetlands and floodplains. Uh, as with any project, we have to avoid wetlands um, and we have to avoid the floodway. Floodplain, you can build in. Um, that's where the water's stagnant. Floodways, where the water's moving. So we have to avoid the floodway. Um, question number five was a set date location for a 100% project update to be presented by myself and the city engineer, Ryan Sazma, to the affected property owners on Oldcrest, Fox Hill, and Camelot. Um, meetings like this are typical with a project. Uh, we typically do a 100% project update uh, two to three weeks prior to construction. That way we can let people know about detours and things like that. Uh, question six was a written report on public safety issues by the Sheboygan PD and Sheboygan Fire Department on how and where they will access the trail for emergency services, especially in winter when the path will have limited access because of ice and snow. Um, we received correspondence from both the Sheboygan PD and Sheboygan Fire Department and neither have any concerns about accessing the area. Question number seven. Uh, was a written statement of certification by state, federal, and local officials that the path will be fully ADA compliant. Um, the funding source is, is, is federal dollars, so ADA compliance is mandatory. Um, WSDOT, on behalf of the Fed's reviews and comments on the plans at various stages, we have to present them at 30, 60, 90 percent. In the end, if they approve the project, they are signing off on the ADA compliance of the project. Uh, there is no separate certification. Um, the slope of the bridge in the area has been brought up as being too steep or not accessible. Uh, the grade is actually only about one and a half percent. So to put that in perspective, the trail on Broughton Drive going down to the beach is at 6.7 percent, and Fox Hill Road in that neighborhood uh, has a slope of about 3.2 percent. Um, and then lastly, just in regards to the last statement in the uh, correspondence from Alderman Boren, I would like to add that both city and county staff are hired to implement policy established by our respective boards and to plan for the long-term success of our community. Um, there are, as previously mentioned, a number of policy documents, comp plans, park and open space plans, industrial plans, uh, the uh, unanimously approved resolution uh, guiding staff to move this project forward. Staff from both the city and county have put a great deal of effort into the project, and I think I can speak for everyone who's been involved. We agree that this would be a beneficial project for the entire community, whether it be in the short term or long term. We've went through the correct approval processes, and we have had more input meetings than required. We have two willing corporate partners. At about a two to one ratio, we've received more positive than negative written comments at the public information meetings. The comments received about trespassing and access to the neighborhood have been addressed, and we've worked around existing encroachments instead of having to remove them. Understandably, we as leaders in the community cannot please everyone all the time, but I believe we have the responsibility to look out for the long-term common good of the entire community. I would wholeheartedly argue that the projects as this provide short and long-term benefits for the entire community. Whether you're a biker or walker or not, projects as this make our community more livable, more attractive, and help our businesses attract and retain employees. Our own EDC, Economic Development Corporation, in addition to numerous studies, would tell you that employees and employers are looking for exactly these types of amenities in their communities. The SEEDC consistently uses our trail and outdoor amenities as selling points uh, to those looking to potentially invest in our community. Amazon's recent RFP had these types of amenities listed. So in closing, I'd ask that you support your staff's request to approve the easement and move this project forward. Thanks, and I'm happy to answer any more questions. Aaron, thank you for the work you put in to answer those questions posed by Alderperson Boren. Under discussion, Alderperson Donahue. Uh, <coughs> yeah, just to uh, start out to say that um, I love the bike trails that have been placed uh, all through the county and particularly in the city. I do agree that they are tremendous enhancement and they're important to the development of the city. Um, and with respect to the um, 
resolution that we passed, I think that with the assistance of federal money, we have uh, made great strides in implementing those very concerns and those very goals. The problem with just the <coughs> small part of the project, um, I did go out to view it, um, and, um, and I know other alders have done that as well. Um, it's just one of those projects that doesn't work in this small area. The whole piece of it is nice, but building this bridge, which is going to have to be built up pretty high, and I know the contractor will decide how it's done, but it's a pretty sludgy wetland below, and I am just not sure how this gigantic I mean, it's going to have to come up pretty high, um, particularly at a 1.5% grade. Um, so as I looked it over, and I know accommodations have been made for the neighbors, and I think that's all well and good, it just doesn't fit there. Now, one of the things that I think could happen, and we do have bike paths that run on residential streets. There are two residential streets that, where that bike path could run and the, the walking path and so forth. And I think that we should take a look at that. And then with the savings that we have actually complete the bike path through Lakeshore Drive, it's my understanding because of the costs, associated costs of this and perhaps other parts of the project, um, we're not able to complete that third segment. I think going through to Lakeshore Drive would be terrific. So um, I'm not going to vote for this easement, which in essence means that I don't want to approve this small particular part of the trail. But I say that um, I have great respect for what the county has done and the city working together and other communities within the county because we've, I think, put our uh, very substantial uh, grant to, uh, to great use. And uh, I just, you know, it's like trying to, you know, build a skyscraper someplace where it doesn't belong. I mean, every once in a while that happens. It's just the project does not fit in that particular area. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Rindfleisch. I am. Um also strongly support the bike paths and the systems and agrees that add to the environment of the community and it's an important I bike the Northwest Trail fairly often the Northwest 400 trail to get downtown from the northwest side of town I went out and looked also and I'm familiar with the neighborhood as I used to own a house on Millcrest Drive and uh, just this doesn't work this path doesn't work right there besides the length of the bridge all the reasons that Mary Lynn mentioned besides the length of the bridge we're really digging right into the, the cliff you know, in effect, we're going to have a retaining wall there, and on top of the retaining wall, we're going to have to put a chain link fence in order to keep people from falling over the retaining wall to get down to, to the neighborhood. So it's just isn't the right location for this particular path. If there was some way to do it in the south of that, of that corridor, it would make some sense. But stretching it right into the cliff on the north side doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, and I think there are better alternatives for using those funds in, in, this, in the, in the uh, city. I personally would like to see the west side bike path along Taylor connected to Union Avenue um, where we have a real mess but we're around Horace Mann School. But there are other alternatives and I do think on the south side there's, there are other street alternatives so the bike path could be continued and go around. So I support the motion. Thank you for your comments. Alder Person Savaglio. Thank you. It's important that we are good stewards of the money that is given to us by the federal government and our local dollars. I don't think I can support this bridge. I would like to see an alternative on the south side of the waterway. Thank you. Thank you. Alderperson Sorensen. I'm going to call up Aaron back because i got a question for you. Um, if this easement is not granted, what, what's your next step? You know, do you have other, other project locations in mind around the county and the city? Um, and I guess as a city alder, I'm going to advocate that you know that that you do explore other opportunities in the city as well you know connecting uh, a path on Weeding Creek which I think would be very important um, you know as you know an alderman for the south side I think that'd be a phenomenal phenomenal addition you know and maybe connecting the first phase connecting the path to Lakeshore Drive would be a, a great opportunity as well you know and, and I'm gonna second uh, older person Ryan Flesh's comment too with uh, um, connecting Union Avenue to the trail. I think, you know, with the proposed hospital going there, Acuity, UW Sheboygan, the middle school there, I think that would be another great location. Um, but 
What, what's your next step if this easement is not granted? Sure, just a couple of points on that question. Alderman Savaggio, we did look at the southern uh, section of that corridor that's been brought up many of times. That was part of the alternatives analysis. It's about two to three million dollars more than the route that we chose. So, um, what's that? What's the reason? It's all wetlands. Okay. So we'd have to build a boardwalk the entire way. Yep. So, and then as far as Weedon Creek, that's been on the city, county, and towns list forever. It's just like Eisner Avenue on the north side. There's three different jurisdictions. Uh, there's tons of real estate that would be have to be purchased. Storm sewer, curb, gutter. So that project's probably a four to five million dollar project. Um, and a significant amount of local funds and getting the city, county, and town to all agree who's going to pay for what and build it to whose standard. So um, I don't know the date. I know it's on the horizon, but it won't be soon enough for these funds. Um, and then as far as next steps, I don't know. If this gets voted down, I have to approach Alliant to see if they're still willing to move forward uh, with the project in any segment. Um, so that'll be my first call tomorrow. And then after that, then I don't know what's going to happen. I'll have to discuss with my leadership. OK, Alderperson Schneider. I'm OK. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you. I agree with my fellow aldermen. Um, I spent a great deal, I spent a great many years working on getting a <coughs> roundabout on the corner of South Business Drive and Whedon Creek. And at that time, they told me that they were going to do a sidewalk from South Business Drive clear down to Lakeshore Drive. Um, I'd like to see that happen with the bike path. I'd like to see that we have Jackson Elementary School. We have a partial um, sidewalk going to almost to Jackson. We have Frisbee Golf there. We also have an, um, to the Coderandry <coughs> Park is that way, Indian Meadow park is that way. I think that if we put our heads together and work diligently, we can find a way to, I think the cost savings for not building the bridge can be implemented in using Whedon Creek and go straight down to Lakeshore Drive. So I will be in support of not allowing this easement to be, to be used at this time. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Seeing no other lights, so the, no, one more. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, I, uh, uh, I thought the uh, eight questions that I asked were reasonable questions. They were from input from my neighbors, and uh, we didn't get to them. That's true at the public works meeting. I think we got to some of them indirectly, but I thought they were reasonable questions, and uh, for people that know me, I don't take things at face value. That's why I ask a lot of questions. I also want to thank uh, Aaron Brault for his cooperation through this process, also our city engineer, Ryan Sazma. <laughs> Uh, they were they were professional through this entire process. Of course, we don't agree with uh, what they're proposing, but I, I do want to give them credit for being professional through this process. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't want to go through a lot of things that I talked about at Public Works. I think the, uh, I want to thank the 13 aldermen that came over in the last week and a half and took the time out of their busy schedules. And I want to thank my four neighbors who acted as the, as the tour guides. Uh, I think they did a good job in the research, and I think they told it like it told it like it is. And I just would uh, urge my fellow council members tonight to uh, uh, vote to file this and not not grant the temporary easement. Thank you very much. Thank you for those comments. Other lights? Will the clerk please call the roll? Do you know what your vote you're voting on? Would you clarify that, Madam Clerk? I will. <coughs> And I vote would be to not approve the easement. And a file. Yep. Yeah. Has everybody got it? Okay. Thirteen eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Moving on to ordinances, items 8.1 through 8.4 will be referred to various committees. 
going on to uh, matters laid over. Item 9.1 is RO number 90, 191 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 20 of 1718 by Alderperson Savaglio and Lewandowski, and RO number 186 of 1718 by the City Clerk to rezone property located at 3530 Lower Falls Road from Class Pre-Planned pre Unit Development to Class planned unit development and recommends to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 9.2 is RC number 153 of 1718 by the Committee of the Whole, who was referred RC number 129 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee and Resolution number 71 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue, establishing the 2018 budget appropriations and the 2017 tax levy for use during the calendar year and recommends passing the resolution with various caveats. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank, you. Uh, oops, sorry. thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file. I, I guess my question is a procedural one as to whether 9.3.4.5 and 6 can be incorporated into the same resolution. I guess I'd just put that to the city attorney. That is how we dealt with it at uh, Committee of the Whole. City attorney? Well, your 9.2 is the actual um, budget resolution, uh, that's, that's the one you want to act on. But then to just simply accept and file three, four, and five, yes, you can do that. And, and that will take care of all the, the various dangling participles, as it were. All right, um, with that in mind, I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Thanks. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, under discussion, Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I wasn't able to attend the uh, committee of the whole meeting. Uh, could somebody from the Public Safety Committee uh, tell me what they were recommending uh, after that committee meeting and what ultimately got in the budget or didn't get in the budget? Okay, first of all, I'd like to have uh, Administrator Hufflin give us a, a brief explanation and then we can get into further discussion. Uh, thank you, Mayor Vanderstein. One thing I, I failed to mention is that as part of the uh, award earlier uh, presented by ICMA, uh, Carrie Ahrens uh, was successful in her coordinating the application. So again, uh, hats off to, to her. Uh, on your desk tonight uh, are some yellow sheets. Uh, in order to minimize confusion, uh, the green sheets uh, can be tossed that you received earlier. The green sheets reflect uh, the discussion points at the community of the whole. And, uh, and again, the original white sheets uh, can also be taught. So we put page numbers on the bottom of this to assist you in putting these pages in the right spot. So this is, a this is our attempt to comprehensively update you uh, on the action items of the Committee of the Whole and the uh, additional information that we received as a result of the uh, expenditure restraint program. Uh, in fact, last week, uh, Nancy Buss, the Director of Finance, did receive this information from the Department of Revenue. <laughs> Uh, the good news for the city of Sheboygan, it is higher uh, from what was originally uh, estimated. Uh, staff uh, wants to use a, a conservative approach, uh, so we inadvertently don't uh, put together a budget which overspends and is not compliant. The new maximum budget growth number is 4.1%. Uh, the expenditure restraint formula is not only the, in, the expenditure increase in the general fund, but also the expenditure increases in other funds that have uh, property taxes as a revenue source. The 4.1 increase is due to new construction in 2016, as well as the inflationary rate over the past 12 months. New construction in 2016 was exceptional, in part due to Acuity's expansion program uh, project. Uh, but construction during this construction year, uh, 2017, has not been uh, exceptional. Uh, if you compare 2016 to the prior five years, um, 
the construction percentage was only 25% of what we experienced in construction year 2016. Just to give you an example of how exceptional uh, 2016 construction year was. Uh, we are using, in putting together the 2018 budget, uh, information associated with the value of construction in 2016. So everything is delayed at least by a year. Uh, consequently, the anticipated expenditure restraint percentage increase for 2019 uh, budget will not be nearly as great. Uh, it is my goal and what's been presented to you tonight in, as part of your yellow pages is uh, my recommendation that it is in the city's best interest to try and capture all of the expenditure amount as allowed by the expenditure restraint program. Again, the 4.1%. When developing the budget, uh, city staff considered not only the needs of the next year budget, but tries to strategize about multiple years, so 2019 and beyond. By increasing up to the maximum allowed, uh, it will give the city a higher expenditure base to consider and budget for future years. Of the additional expenditure amount allowed, most of it was placed in the wage adjustment reserve account, simply as a placeholder. This additional amount is not expected to be spent, simply a placeholder. As many of you know, personnel costs represent 76% of the general fund expenditures. City staff is currently negotiating with all four union contracts, one fire, two police, and one transit. No agreements nor tentative agreements exist at this time on any wage increase associated with their collective bargaining agreement. I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, let's uh, go back to Alderperson Boren's question. Uh, Alderperson Donahue, can you respond to his question about the Committee of the Whole and uh, public safety? Uh, I think to, <clears throat> to guide our discussion, the, the, uh, the best uh, piece of paper here is the, the, white is the top piece of paper. This is what we passed at Committee of the Whole. These were the amendments that we made to the proposed budget. Um, and those included um, uh, increasing the um, city clerk's, um, approving um, by an eight to seven margin, uh, the uh, uh, part-time person uh, who would essentially act at certain times as an election person, but also um, uh, just be present to assist uh, uh, the city clerk staff. Um, the, uh, that, was not, that was not approved by the, uh, by the city administrator, but uh, was approved by Committee of the Whole. Um, the contract and services that we're looking at with fire uh, is that fire study. And so the, there is money that is moved into the budget for that, and that is taken out of the contingency reserve. So that is how that is funded. Um, the cable, um, the cable TV fund; those were increased contracted services. Um, and then I would probably defer to to Daryl to uh, talk about the capital project funds. If I'm making the rustling, I, I apologize. Um, the uh, capital uh, project fund, and we did discuss this at Committee of the Whole. So essentially, this was uh, acting as a Committee of the Whole. This was our recommendation to ourselves as to how the 2018 budget should look, if that's a fair statement. It is a fair statement, uh, but that, that's to the best of my recollection. Thank you for that response. Are there any other questions or discussion? Alder Person Boren? Thank you, Mayor. Originally, when this came to finance about that position in the city clerk's office, I believe there was a, a price tag of, if I recall correctly, twenty-one or twenty-two thousand uh, dollars when it first came to finance, and now it's down to thirteen. Was uh, how was that? How was that arrived at? Going from the twenty down to where we are now, Administrator Huffland. The, the information that was uh, part of uh, documents that you received uh, had. Uh, detailed line items, and then it had the total, subtotal. Uh, when I was discussing it uh, on the floor, I was adding all the numbers together. So instead of being almost 14,000, uh, I doubled the number because I included the subtotal in it. Uh, so the information that you have in front of you tonight, the 13,842, is the correct amount. And that's going to satisfy, uh, I would ask the city clerk, uh, 
that's going to satisfy your needs then for that for that position. Uh, yes, it is. We would spend that money either way, whether it's in the temporary salaries or whether it's in the permanent part-time under, it'll be 19.5 hours, no benefits, and we'll have a trained person rather than bringing brand new people in for every election and not knowing who we will have. So, yeah, it's a better spend of the money. We're going to spend it either way. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk... Alder person Bellinger. Okay, um, I've got, you know, just some several, several questions for um, city administrator. So, the, uh, could you please tell, um, you know, for those at home and for the other aldermen too, what the capital borrowing amount is going to be for 2018, the city hall borrowing and the board of water commissioners borrowing, and what that total <laughs> out to be. The uh, 2018 budget uh, is consistent with the uh, capital improvement program that was approved by the Common Council in July. Uh, that budget identified 10.2 million. The 2018 budget before you is the same, 10.2 million. Of that 10.2 million, uh, 5 million is identified as for phase one, uh, phase one of two phases uh, for city hall renovations. Uh, an additional 2.5 million is recommended for cash, uh, which is consistent with, again, the, the CIP. Uh, regarding the water utility, uh, I, I don't have that information. Uh, that um, borrowing, I think, is gonna be revenue bond, uh, not, not general obligation. So the, that will be paid, the debt service on uh, anything associated with the water utility will be paid back by user fees, not property taxes. Okay. So 10.25 million, that exceeds the, um, what is being called for bank eligible. Um, you know, bank eligible, you need to stay within 10 million. Could you please explain to people, you know, how you're gonna get around that? Uh, for any borrowing over 10 million, there is a slight, there is expected to be a slightly higher interest rate. Uh, but uh, uh, that's on all 10 million or 10 point, it, that doesn't start when you go over the month or money that you go over so that's on everything that's correct so you're gonna you're gonna just exceed it and and, and deal with it that way uh, recognize that uh, the city will pay a slightly higher interest rate okay and then I think you went through this a little bit but uh, before but you, what is the dollar amount for the tax levy increase for the net new construction? I think you did percentage, but um, do you have what the dollar amount is? And then what would be the balance of the tax levy increase in dollars over and above that? Uh, maybe I'll answer uh, your last question first. The city, uh, the increase in the tax levy uh, is substantially associated with new construction. Uh, I think that it was, uh, over $90 million with the, was the net new construction this last year. The prior year, I think, was $43 million. Some of it's in TIF district, uh, some of it is not. But for purposes of, of um, the uh, levy limits uh, and expenditure restraint, uh, they look at the uh, net new construction regardless of whether it's in a TIF district or not. For that new construction, the city will receive $864,000 in additional levy to support the 2018 budget. In addition to that 864,000, the 19 cent per thousand increase in the assessed tax rate, again, assessed, not equalized, uh, is, ex is expected to bring in an additional $310,000. So the 19 cents per thousand means that for every 100,000 valuation, assessed valuation, uh, someone would pay $19, $200,000 property <coughs> would pay $38 on, on up. So $1,174,128 is what's before you tonight as part of your resolution for consideration of possible approval. Uh, but roughly 864 is solely associated with new property in the community. Uh, other than the 19 cents per thousand, uh, no additional levy will be asked of existing property owners for city purposes. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I appreciate all those answers, and um, I, I'm just, I'm having a hard time um, dealing with uh, these numbers in, in the borrowing. Um, in the past, last year, I called the budget uh, 
uh, reckless and irresponsible. I think this is you know, some, of, some of the same. Um, if you go back to 2007, we, you know, we had outstanding debt of 58 million, 2008, 58 million, 2009, we ran it up to 61 million. You know, we finally got it back down right now to 34 million. And with the rate that we're going in the ne next five-year capital plan, we're going to, you know, add another 30, 31 million dollars to the, to the, you know, to the debt. And uh, we worked so hard to get to where we're at. It just troubles me greatly that we're reversing course and going back the other way. And in 2007, 2008, and 2009, those were also years where our bond rating was adversely affected due to the high level of debt that we had. So for those reasons, I, I can't support this budget. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. Well, just a brief response. If I can. Again, I, I, I just take issue with the fact that we're being reckless. Um, first of all, out of the 10.2 million, we need to recognize that 5 million of that is for City Hall. It's a one-off expenditure, and we need to just remember that so we are not recklessly increasing our debt limit we have decided as a council that finally we do need to do something about city hall and, and that's what that is um i've had a couple of constituents um complain to me about all of the road construction that is going on in the city and i <laughs> and i just chuckle and in fact i i sent an email to ryan sasma because i did this wild goose chase around um, the bridge and then up to Martin Pontiac and trying one thing and another and, and Ryan was very kind to to you know to point out to me this this would only be temporary and you know I should probably pay attention to things but I think the fact that there are there is a lot of construction is finally what is going on and what should be going on in our community we did take that debt down but we paid a big big price which is absolutely lousy road conditions and so I think that we're being responsible by increasing our, our debt load somewhat, still at 21% of the allowable limit. So we're not being reckless and we are not interfering with our bond rating. And I think our constituents, once the construction is all done and they get, there aren't any more you know, drive arounds or whatever, are gonna be pretty happy with the result. So I, I think, We've gone over this, you know, the capital part of this we have already approved, and we've had kind of some of these same discussions. But I think, I think that this is part and parcel of the budget, and, and I, I, I think we need to approve it and move on. Thank you very much for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Are we voting just on nine? This is just on nine point two. Okay, thank you. The whole budget, though, is it not? That's it. It's the whole budget. Yes, this is the budget. There are yes or no on the budget. Yes. Correct. Twelve ayes, three noes. Motion passes. Alderman, alderperson drawn, I understand we're going to take 9.3 through 9.6 together then. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'd like a motion to uh, take all four together to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, um, would the clerk please call the roll? Or can we? We, we, we'll take a voice vote. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to other matters, item 10.1 is resolution number 92 of 1718, and that'll be referred to the Public Works Committee. Um, uh, item 10.2 is RO number 222 of 1718 by the City Clerk granting various licenses. Alderperson Holshue. Uh, <coughs> we just need a motion to accept and file. I'm sorry, I just went completely blank. Make a motion to, to accept and file. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Very good. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Next, I'll turn it over to the city attorney for other matters received after the agenda was posted. 
11.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a tax levy certification for the 2017-2018 school year from the Sheboygan Area School District. That will be referred uh, to, no, I see that one will lie over. 11.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a claim from Michael Craig Beek for alleged damages to his vehicle when he hit a water valve. That will be referred to Finance and Personnel. 11.3 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2017, June 30, 2018, and June 30, 2019. Refer to Law and Licensing. 11.4 is an RO by the City Plan uh, Commission uh, petitioning for direct annexation uh, for property located in the City of Sheboygan owned by the City of Sheboygan. That will lie over. 11.5 uh, is a resolution by all the persons <coughs> Bellinger and Wolf officially recognizing the Memorial Neighborhood Association. And that will be referred to the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet. Next uh, is a contemplated closed session. Uh, Alder Person drawing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Make a motion to adjourn and close session under the exemption in section 19.851E, Wisconsin Stat for the purpose of deliberating and negotiating regarding the purchase of public property where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session to wit, the potential purchase of property located in the 1200 block of South 11th Street and for the purposes of deliberating regarding a potential development opportunity in the Sheboygan Business Center and possible development opportunity on parcel number 59281-500560 located along North 15th Street, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Thank you for that motion and support to go into closed session. Will the clerk please call the roll. Jim wants these back. <coughs> 15 eyes. Motion passes. For our TV viewers, uh, this will end our um, transmission for tonight, and um, we'll be adjourning in closed session. We'll take a three-minute recess and reconvene.